Okay, just want to do a very short video about alcohol stoves. Um, again, taking into account what I've, you know, the information I've accumulated um, through, you know, rethinking about, uh, researching online, and so on and so forth, the alcohol stove and what it's really about, and of course the the fires, the ethanol fires that people can buy these days. I mean, your standard ethanol fire uh, for liquid ethanol is just a flat rectangular box, like an elongated shoe box. And it's just got this very thin slit at the top, okay? And the, you know, the upper middle class ones have a, um, a you know, a proper remote control so that you can adjust how thick that is. So when you light the ethanol, it's my guess that it would slowly, you know, you get some flames, you get some flames up there. It would slowly heat up the device. As it does so, the liquid ethanol that you've poured in here will start to get more and more and more liquid, uh, more and more vaporous and gas-like. And then that will then steadily increase the quantity that comes out. So essentially it's working a bit like a gas stove, realistically speaking, or a gas, um, gas burner. But you've got this like long, thin, rectangular slit for the vapors to come out of. All right, that's as if it was like top of view, oops, top of view, and that's as if it was side view, if you get my drift, okay? Top view would be just like a slit, or, you know, a, a slit in the box, depending upon how you want to visualize it. Okay, um, and of varying dimensions. So I'm, I'm not doing a precise diagram here for you, I'm just showing you the theory, the way I understand it. Now, when you look at your Trangia type stoves. I mean, some of these are quite curious because uh, can, you can have a container, sometimes with no seams, all right, and it could have an inner wall. Now, this inner wall doesn't necessarily go right the way down to the bottom there at all. It just doesn't do that. Uh, or if it does, there'll be just a little opening to allow the liquid fuel which you pour into here. Okay, liquid fuel to be able to seep through here, because like between the walls you've got a wicking material. Now that wicking material, according to my research and playing around, can either be uh, gl um, glass wool, sorry, uh, fiberglass basically, or it can be steel wool. And there's certain types of fiberglass, which are fiberglass type stuff, which is specially designed for, for being heat resistant. And so that can be a, your wicking material. Now, these stoves sometimes have, you know, a capping going over there, but a little aperture there, a little hole on the side. And the same on this side here, okay? Now, you light it. You light your fuel in the middle there. As that burns and starts to give off flame, it heats the whole device. As it does so, it starts, starts to increase the temperature in the walls. As it increases the temperature in the walls, some of the alcohol, which is now wicked up the walls, then turns into a vapor. As it does so, you start to get it jetting or streaming out of here, and eventually you get flames coming out the side. So from on top, what it looks like is uh, basically a gas ring. You've got the center of your pot there, and you end up with a flame there, 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 just like a gas hob, okay? And so again, that's from the side, and that's from the top. So, what what you could do if you're using ethanol is to try and create something which has, uh, which works like this. So what I could do is get a wicking material. Maybe that'll be a fire resistant glass wool. Or it could be steel wool, maybe a stainless steel wool, if it's a good enough one made by a reputable company, hasn't got all those ghastly chemicals you get from Chinese manufactured crap all over it, you know. Um, and just try and create a cylinder of metal to go into the middle, maybe even just a rigid aluminium foil, uh, you know, a more rigid, stronger type of aluminium foil than just kitchen foil, maybe, okay. And then maybe, it, you know, we can get the wicking and then we can just get flames going up the sides. Or if we're really clever, we can try and do a jetting thing around the, <coughs> pardon me, around the outside there. Well, I don't know whether I'm quite clever enough to do that. And anyway, it depends upon the apparatus I get, which shop I get it from, and the rest of it. Some um, YouTube videos talk about some aluminium bottles 
the you slice up so you've got the base of the aluminium bottle which can be like that roughly speaking okay I'm, I'm, I'm not an artist I'm sure you can tell and then the top of the bottle which would normally be you know going up there you slice it off and you turn it upside down so it's more like a funnel of this aluminium bottle which goes down to there okay or maybe you want to slice off those bits and so you get a seal there you get a seal there so it's starting to look already like this over here isn't it because you you got an inner wall you got the outer walls and you got to you know you make sure you got a gap and so what you could do is have a, a filling material but some of the ones I've seen they don't have a filling material there so they just rely upon the fact that there will be once you've lit your liquid once you've lit the liquid okay there'll be enough heat to be able to vaporize some of this stuff so when you've got an aperture or a hole there and there which you can drill you will then get your natural flames coming out the side alright and sometimes they light these things with the help of um, a band which is wrapped around the waist of it so to speak of the same glass fiber heat resistant glass fiber cordage which goes all the way around the middle and then that's just um, soaked in ethanol or methylated spirits and set fire to to raise the temperature of the whole thing up again with ethanol we could have one of these stoves yes uh, but trying to build a bigger one so we get much more of a feeling of uh, you know either a real fire or something which would be producing a substantial enough um, heat output is what's really worthwhile doing here I mean I hope you can see my videos I really, um, I really should turn this around for you there you go okay so now you can see it the right way up my beautiful artistic you know gonna be hung in the Tate gallery I'm telling you <laughs> uh, you know impression of a one of these upper class farty um, ethanol fire burners Plus my impression of a working class, let's go camping, practical, rational, down to earth, actually works with like very, very little risk, proper, you can tell where my allegiance lies, can't you? <laughs> proper camping stove. And then my impression of the um, aluminium bottle stove. But as I say, my goal is to either have lots of these in the bottom of my can of burning methylated, um, methylated fuel or to upscale these th things so that we can or so that I can have my uh, or the impression of a real fire uh, indoors in a safe way obviously I'll be taking full fire precautions do not try this unless of course you're going to take full fire precautions and you're going to find out about full fire precautions and uh, to try and incorporate um, home distilled ethanol. I mean, I, I'm not going to be doing this with methylated spirits indoors. I don't know the chemical equation for uh, methylated spirits when you burn it. I know that if you're just burning ethanol, you haven't got too much to worry about. If you're burning methanol, maybe there's more to worry about. I don't know. So I'm not going to, you know, I want to do this with bioethanol or which are, which are meant to use in this type of fire okay uh, or you know home distilled bioethanol or ethanol that's that's where we're at so far so you get you, you should be getting to grips with the idea that this is not a pipe dream this is a real thing that can be done uh, I've got to I mean I've, I've got a good idea of the economics of the fermentation which is making it look more likely that it will be cheaper than buying denatured bioethanol uh, anyway. But I want to double check that and I want to get some trial fermentations done and to see whether if I have an increased percentage on the previous experiment that I had whether my existing still will do okay and I also want to start building some small scale stills to see um, what I can do. Uh, local supermarkets uh, cost of sugar is not too dear 
at the moment, so we're moving in the right direction. Hey presto, there you go. One of these days I will be paid for my artistic exploits, I'm telling you. <coughs> yeah, and pigs might fly, and Alex Jones might stop being a conspiracy theorist, and God alone knows what else. Okay, play it cool.